We all know a credit score is important, but a lot of us dismiss it or don't fully understand how it affects us in the here and now. All of us know that someday when we apply for a loan for a house, it's going to affect that. But a lot of us aren't in the place to be thinking about buying a home, so we're like, whatever, it's not important. But it is. So we're going to talk about what a credit score is, what it affects, slash what it means to you personally, how it is calculated. Then we're going to talk about how to help it, even if you've never looked at your credit score, but some ways that can help you do it. And now, just so you know, I'm going to put the timestamps all down below. So if there's a specific part that I just mentioned that you want to skip to and learn about, then feel free, but I do think all of the parts are important. So the first one we want to talk about is what exactly a credit score is, because obviously that's what this whole entire video is about. But before I do that, I really would appreciate it if you hit the like button down below and the subscribe button, because it really helps me out and I want to grow this channel a lot this year. So the little bit you can do for me helping you is helping me out by hitting those two buttons. And the biggest thing I can do for you is keeping on with doing videos every single Wednesday, helping you figure out adulting while I'm attempting to figure it out myself. It is always an ongoing learning journey. And today we are learning about credit scores. And what a credit score is, according to the Oxford language definition, is a number assigned to a person that indicates to the lender their capacity to repay a loan. So in the basic sense of what that whole entire term means is how trustworthy are you at paying back money you borrow from other people. But it's used for more things than just borrowing from other people. So everyone has a score, literally everyone. If the government knows you exist, you have a credit score. Even if you've never borrowed anything or opened a credit card, you still have a score. And scores range from 300 to 850. And after we talk about a few other things, we will talk about how that score is calculated. But before we go into how it's calculated, you might wonder, what does it really mean to me if I don't want to get a loan? Because like we said, the, one of the number one things people think of when they think of credit score is a loan. Whether it's a car loan, a home loan, a personal loan, a business loan, we think of credit scores. But does it affect more than that? Even if you never plan on getting a loan, will the credit score affect you? The answer is most likely yes. It affects a lot more things than people realize. For one, Someday you probably are going to want to get a loan. So help out future you by making things easier, by doing stuff now to make it so it's not as hard for you later. Because I promise you, in this day and age, you're going to want a loan of some sort, okay? It's just, it's needed. Unless you're a billionaire. Then, you know, you want to send me money, some money? Because that'd be great. Because then my credit score wouldn't matter as much. But that aside, what does a credit score affect in the here and now, not counting loans? Because you heard that enough. It's actually your ability to rent an apartment or a house. Yes, even though you're not technically borrowing any money from these people, you are putting them at risk by living in their spaces. And so a lot of times, almost every single apartment building, even if it is privately owned by a person and not by a corporation, you know, like a company, a lot of times they still run a credit score check and a background check in general. And I even personally know people that have been denied for apartments because of their credit score. A lot of people think like, oh, you'll still be accepted with conditions like paying a higher deposit or doing this or that, but sometimes that's not enough. They're like, even if you pay a higher deposit, legally we can't have you pay enough of a deposit that it would make it worth the risk of you moving in. And that's a sad reality. So you don't want to be put in the position where you can't move in somewhere or have flexibility on where you want to live because of your credit score. Also in general, you don't want to have to pay a higher deposit and have your money locked up with this building that you're living in instead of having in a savings account making you money. And besides that, let's say you just plan on living with your parents for the rest of your life. Hey, you know, own it. I no shame. It still affects your ability to get a credit card with great sign-up bonuses. I actually did additional videos on that. I did one for 2020, which had the best sign-up bonuses where you don't realistically have to spend that much money. It's not, there's no yearly fees, but they're gonna pay you money to spend your money. And they're also gonna pay you money for signing up for the card. So feel free to watch those videos after this. But let's say again, you plan on living at home forever, or you happen to already own a house and didn't need a loan because you're a billionaire and you're gonna send me money 
and you also plan on never getting a credit card, there's still more things that it affects. It actually affects your ability to get and keep certain jobs in certain fields, which a lot of people had no idea this was a thing. I personally did not know until like the last few years that this was actually a thing that can happen, even in some jobs that don't even pay that much money and you're not even handling that much money in general, it still can be a factor because anything in the world of finance or handling or touching money, they want you to be trustworthy or in the realm of security, even if it's not literal money, it could be things that are worth high amounts of money. They don't want you to be in a place where you might steal or do things that aren't ethical because of the situation you are in financially, which is shown through your credit score. So some jobs before they even consider someone being hired, they run a credit score check. And if your credit score comes back really low, they see you as a risk of doing unethical things on the job. But again, let's say, you know, again, you never plan on getting a loan. You plan on living at home forever. You plan on never getting a credit card. You plan on never working in finance. There's still another like few things that your credit score affects. It actually affects your ability to rent a car, what cell phone plans you're going to get, what your premium is on your insurance. And yes, you are required to get insurance for things like a vehicle or health insurance. So, you know, I don't care, you have to have insurance. So this does affect you personally, even if you didn't have any of the other things we talked about. And the other thing is whether you have to pay a deposit and how much of a deposit you have to pay for rent, for things like setting up utilities, for internet, all these things that you would never think about that are actually affected by your credit score. Yes, if you plan on setting up internet or getting a cell phone, you may have to pay more money or put down a higher deposit than you would if you had a higher credit score. Sometimes if you have a higher credit score, you don't have to put a deposit down at all to set up things like utilities and internet. But sometimes they do want you to put that deposit down because you're seen as a risk of not paying your bills. So they want you to pay some money ahead of time. So if you don't pay your bill down the road, they have something to you know use as collateral. Collateral, collateral, collateral. Collateral, I can never say that word right. So obviously that's a lot of things that your credit score does affect and at least one of them, most likely most of them are going to relate to you in your future or you in the here and now. So make things easier for yourself and learn more about your credit score and work on bringing it up. Because the biggest takeaway is the lower your credit score is, the more money and frustration you have to go through or additional steps you have to do to do things where if you had a higher credit score, you wouldn't have to deal with it and you wouldn't have to pay as much money or any money at all. And now that might make you wonder, well, how is this score calculated? Because you're saying it's so important, it affects so many things. You told me what it is, but how is it calculated? So credit score is actually calculated by five things and they all have different weights. So each one is a different amount of importance towards this end score. So the first one that is the most important is going to be your payment history. That makes up 35% of your score. The next one is what you owe or your utilization ratio is one of the biggest factors in what you owe and that makes up 30% of your score. And then your length of credit history makes up 15% of your score. So again, the earlier and the more accounts you have open, the easier it is to bring up that credit history. And keep in mind, it is not the first account you ever open, it is an average of all of your accounts open. So if you open a bunch of new ones, it's gonna bring that score down. So make sure you build enough old ones for future use so when you open up an account in the future, it doesn't bring down that number because you already have a bunch of old existing accounts. And that's also why in most cases you should not close an account unless it has crazy fees. And then the other one is new credits. So basically it's your derogatory marks. It's when you open up a credit score and they run a credit check on you, this can affect your score. And that's the general sense of it. There's more information in detail. And also all these things I just talked about, including the fifth one, which is the type of credit you have or the mix of credit. So the different types of credit you have open from a loan to a credit card, those are two different types. And they like you to have a mix to know that you're trustworthy with different forms of credit because who knows, if you only have credit cards, you might not be trustworthy with a loan. So they wanna see that you have a variety 
society, which kind of sucks because not everybody wants to take out additional forms of credit to prove that they are trustworthy with the credit they actually want to have. But either way, all these five ones I just talked about, I also talked about a lot in how credit cards affect your credit score. I went into more details on those different factors, so I will link that video down below. And in general, I'll link down a bunch of videos that are helpful that are related to this topic that you might want to watch after this. But the last one I want to talk about is how do I help these numbers? How do you help bring up your credit score if you've never really done much with it? So keeping in mind that they are all percentages and they're all weighed differently, obviously the things that are weighed 35% and 30% are the things you should focus on first and are gonna make the biggest difference. And for me personally, I think one of the easiest ways to help your payment history and your utilization or the amount you owe is to actually have credit cards. And some people are very much against credit cards and I understand why, because if you are not good and you do not handle them in a proper way, it can ruin your credit score, it can ruin your future in many different ways. You do not wanna be taking out more money or spending more money than you do normally. And how you are going to do that is on your credit cards, you only wanna have a utilization rate of less than 30%. Anything more than 30% can actually hurt your credit score. So if you're using too much of your credit cards, taking out too much money compared to the amount of money they allow you to have, which is your credit limit, you only wanna use less than 30% of the total amount of credit available to you and each individual card you only want to use 30 percent of your credit limit so it does affect both things affect it your total amount you can take out and also the individual amount you can take out on each card both of those utilization rates make a difference so basically the amount of money you put on your credit card you want it to be less than 30 percent and ideally you kind of want it to be one to two percent but there is some mixed opinions in the finance community on what the exact ideal percentage is but it is known that anything above 30 can really hurt your credit score. So what I do personally is a lot of times I actually do spend more than 30% of my credit limit. I spend a good amount in a given month, especially on some of my cards that have lower credit limits. But what I do is I make payments right away. I do not let it get to the point where it bills me. So every month you're going to be billed and they actually report to the credit bureau before your billing date. So don't just think, oh, as long as I pay it before the bill is due or before the statement comes out that I'll be fine. No, they report it before they send you the statement. And you can call the companies to find out how they do it. But my easiest way to handle it is if you make big purchases, I make a payment right away so I know my utilization is low. So you might think like, oh, then I should just pay it all. I shouldn't let any of it go to the point where they send out a statement and make it so my billing point is zero. That's also not good because you still want to be able to have payment history, which is that 35%. So you talked about this could help with your utilization as long as you keep it less than 30%, ideally one to 2% utilization rate. And that's actually easy math. I promise it's a lot easier than it sounds, but either way, you can help your credit score with credit cards by keeping your utilization down low. And in addition to that, having payment history. So allowing a amount of money to sit on your credit card. So when the statement comes out, there's an amount due. So there's actually a bill that you are paying, which counts as a payment because those payments before it's actually sent out to a statement, I have noticed do not make or affect much of my payment history. It's once they get to a statement and once I pay it on the due date, then that brings up my credit score. There's a lot more that goes into when you're supposed to pay and when you're not supposed to pay, but in the general sense, keep a statement that goes out each month and pay that statement in full every single month and keep it less than 30%. Sorry, that's probably a packed information. I try to explain basically a whole entire video's worth of information in that section on how you can bring up your credit score, but watch that credit card video and how credit cards affect your credit score to understand more of those elements more. But overall, we have talked enough about credit scores today, so feel free to check out those other videos I linked down below, and I do post new videos every single Wednesday, which again, help you figure out adulting while I'm attempting to figure it out myself. Myself. I do plenty of videos on credit scores, credit card financing, roommates, sex, relationships, vlogs. I do so much. So feel free to check out my videos next Wednesday and some old ones if you haven't seen them. And I hope you have a great rest of your morning, evening, night, whatever it is for you. I'll see you Wednesday.